Chapter 4.10.3 The National Strategic Security Dilemma Now that we have a general model of agrarian society's resource control structure, we can review the topic of national strategic security. Members of abstract power hierarchies have two primary vulnerabilities, foreign invasion and internal corruption. The former usually occurs when a foreign belligerent actor uses physical power as the basis for their attack. The latter usually occurs when a belligerent actor uses abstract power as the basis for their attack. Either way, both vulnerabilities have the same solution, impose severe physical costs on the attacker until they don't have the capacity or inclination to continue their attack. Either way, both vulnerabilities have the same solution, impose severe physical costs on the attacker until they don't have the capacity or inclination to continue their attack. Based on this insight, we can see that the same primordial economic dynamics which apply to wild organisms and organizations also apply to agrarian society. This makes perfect sense considering how agrarian society is quite literally a pack of wild animals just like any other pack animal species observed in nature. We can therefore describe the dynamics of national strategic security the same way we describe the survivor's dilemma in the previous chapter. Like any other wild organism in nature, every nation has a BCRA, benefit to cost ratio of attack. A nation's BCRA, benefit to cost ratio of attack, is a simple fraction determined by two variables. The benefit of attacking it, BA, and the cost of attacking it, CA. BA is a function of how much resource abundance and control authority is offered by a nation's abstract power hierarchy. Nations with large economies, high level of resource abundance, and substantial amounts of control authority over those resources have a higher BA, benefit of attack. On the flip side of the equation, CA, cost of attack, is a function of how capable a nation is at imposing severe, physically prohibitive costs on its attackers. Nations with populations who are more capable of and inclined to impose physically prohibitive costs on attackers have higher CA, cost of attack. Nations which survive and prosper are those which manage both sides of their benefit to cost ratio of attack. BCRA equation effectively. To prevent their BCRA from climbing to hazardous levels, nations must either shrink the numerator or grow the denominator of their BCRA equation. They must either shrink their economy and control authority to decrease benefit of attack, or they must grow their cost of attack by increasing their capacity and inclination to impose severe physically prohibitive costs on attackers. Decreasing the size of a nation's economy is not an ideal solution. So growing cost of attack is the preferable option. If nations choose to grow their economy without growing cost of attack at an equal or higher rate than the rate at which benefit of attack increases, Benefit to cost ratio of attack will climb. This explains why pacifism, i.e. a decrease in a nation's inclination to use physical power to impose physically prohibitive costs on attackers, is such a systemic security threat. The more pacifist a nation becomes, the higher their BCRA will climb. The more likely they are to be devoured by predators, either in the form of foreign evasion or internal corruption. To achieve long-term survival, nations must keep their BCRA level lower than the hazardous BCRA level of the surrounding environment, i.e. the BCRA level which would motivate belligerents to attack. 
the space in between a nation's BCRA level and the hazardous BCRA level can be called its prosperity margin. This margin indicates how much a nation can afford for its BCRA to rise before it risks being attacked. Figure 53 provides an illustration of the resulting national strategic security dilemma. Note, this is exactly the same figure as figure 16, except with a different name. As a nation's economy becomes stronger and more resource abundant, its BA increases. This causes the nation's BCRA to increase and get closer to the environment's hazardous BCRA level. As a nation's BCRA level approaches the hazardous level, their prosperity margin shrinks. This creates an unfavorable dynamic where the more successful a nation becomes, the more vulnerable it is to either foreign invasion or internal corruption. To make matters even more challenging, a nation cannot know for sure how much prosperity margin it has, nor how quickly it's shrinking. This is because nobody can truly know what the hazardous BCRA level is, as it is a probabilistic phenomenon which depends on the capacity and inclination of neighboring nations and is therefore completely outside of a nation's individual control. All a nation can know about their environment's hazardous BCRA level is that it will continuously drop as the environment becomes increasingly congested, contested, competitive, and hostile. Does our, your environment qualify? Figure 53, illustration of the national strategic security dilemma. Question, how much prosperity margin does the nation have? Answer, they can't know. Question, how quickly does a nation need to increase their cost of attack to lower their benefit to cost ratio of attack? Answer, they can't know. The National Strategic Security Dilemma puts all nations into a predicament where they have the same three response options described in the previous chapter. Option one is to do nothing to counterbalance the effect of increase in benefit of attack. The upside to this strategy is that it is more energy efficient. This is because the population effectively ignores its security responsibilities. The downside of this strategy is that it causes the nation's BCRA to continue rising ad infinitum, shrinking prosperity margin until the point where the nation is virtually guaranteed to be invaded or internally corrupted. Options 2 and 3 represent strategies where a population doesn't ignore their security responsibilities and uses physical power to impose severe physical cost on attackers, i.e. increase in CA, cost of attack. The difference between option 2 and option 3 is that option 2 only grows cost of attack at the same rate as benefit attack grows, causing the nation's BCRA to remain fixed. Unfortunately, this will still cause prosperity margin to continue shrinking because it does not account for the fact that the environment's hazardous BCRA level continuously falls as it becomes increasingly congested, contested, competitive, and hostile. Option 3 remedies this flaw by endeavoring to increase cost of attack faster than benefit of attack grows, causing benefit to cost ratio of attack, BCRA, to fall and prosperity margin to grow. Assuming the nation succeeds at increasing their cost of attack fast enough to outpace their environment's fallen hazardous BCRA level. Not surprisingly, the best strategic move a nation can make to solve the national strategic security dilemma is the same move any living organisms or organization can make to solve the survivor's dilemma. Option number three. As illustrated by the agrarian fossil record and thousands of years of written testimony by survivors, if an agrarian population wants to survive and prosper, 
They need to endeavor to master their capacity and inclination to project physical power so they can continually increase cost of attack and buy themselves as much prosperity margin as possible. This creates a national strategic shilling point for all nations to vector a portion of their resources towards increasing their cost of attack. Unfortunately, this shilling point causes the surrounding environment to become increasingly more contested, competitive, and hostile, causing the environment's hazardous BCRA level to fall faster. This creates a self-reinforcing feedback loop which makes it increasingly more imperative for nations to continue increasing their cost of attack and lowering their benefit to cost ratio of attack as much as they can afford to do so. The emergent effect of this self-reinforcing feedback loop is the same as what we observe in nature. Agrarian societies grow in size and scale, organizing in larger and increasingly clever ways and developing increasingly clever power projection tactics. They focus much of their time, attention, and resources on discovering and adopting dual-use power projection tactics which help them manage both sides of their benefit-to-cost ratio of attack equation, just like the behavior observed with the evolution of life. Just as these dynamics explain why nature's top surviving wild animals are often fierce looking and tough, they also explain why the most successful nations with the best performing economies often have the largest and most successful militaries. Eventually, this power projection game scales into what we see today with massive scale militaries and extraordinary power projection capabilities. Thus, the same dynamics which explain power projection in nature simultaneously offer us a simple explanation for how and why behaviorally modern sapiens scaled their physical power projection capacity to the point of risking nuclear annihilation.